Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is a quick vlogging test with the Fujifilm X-T4. Now, this is a separate video to the vlogging test that I've done as part of my in-depth X-T4 review. So if you're interested in that and everything else to do with the X-T4, then do check that out. I've linked to it right here. This particular video though is just looking at the vlogging capabilities of the X-T4 and in particular comparing the performance of the 16 to 55 against the 10 to 24. I'm starting with the 16 to 55 at 16 mil f2.8 and with stabilization disabled. So let's fix that straight away. That's better. This is now with the built-in stabilization of the X-T4 enabled. This uses a sensor shift stabilization system. And it's important with this lens because this lens does not have optical image stabilization. And the X-T4 really does make lenses like this a lot more practical. But in the next few clips, I'm going to be comparing it against the optical and sensor shift stabilization of the 10 to 24. But let me tell you about a few of the settings that I'm using first. So, I'm filming with the X-T4 in 4K at 25p. I'm using an external microphone, the Rode Wireless Go, which you might see attached to my collar. I'm filming with the Eterna film simulation. All of these settings apply to all of the clips in this video. I like Eterna because it gives a really nice looking image straight out of camera without the need for grading. And if you're wondering why I keep glancing down, it's because I'm on a slightly rougher path than normal and I have to look down because there's a lot of rather gnarly routes that I don't particularly want to fall over. I have the exposure fixed in manual movie mode. I'm at 50th of a second, f2.8, and I'm using auto ISO to balance the exposure. It's a nice overcast day, so hopefully there shouldn't be any harsh shadows around. Okay, now let's try something different. Okay, now I've switched the Fujifilm XF 10 to 24 millimeter, and I'm roughly halfway through the range. I've set the zoom ring to between 14 and 18 mil to approximate the same 16 millimeter field of view as the last lens. Now I've switched off the optical stabilization in the lens, but the way the X-T4 works is that will also disable the sensor shift stabilization. You can't have one or the other. You can either have both or none at all. So let's switch them both on and see how the picture improves. Right now I've enabled the optical image stabilization, which has also activated the IBIS sensor stabilization. So this is the camera using both technologies at the same time. It uses different technologies for different axes in the actual stabilization process itself. So let me know what you think. Does the 10 to 24 with OIS and the IBIS look better, more stable to you than the 16 to 55 did with sensor shift stabilization only. In fact, just so you can compare them, I'm gonna show a clip of both of them playing at the same time here, so you can tell me which one you think looks more stable. Now, there are, of course, pros and cons to using each of these lenses. The benefit of the 16 to 55 is that it is f2.8 all the way through, which makes it a stop faster. So you should have seen a shallower depth of field on those clips compared to this one, where I'm filming at f4. However, the 1024 has the benefit of being smaller, lighter. It's also cheaper and it has optical stabilization, as you know, but crucially, it will also zoom a lot wider. All right, how does that look? This is the 10 to 24 at 10 millimeter f4. And as you can see, it is just capturing so much of a broader field of view. This is great for environmental vlogging. Let's just have a look at this beautiful forest that I'm in. And I should have also given you a chance to see how the combination of optical and sensor shift stabilization handles that sort of motion. Just for an extra comparison, here is the 10 to 24 at 10 mil F4 using all of the X-T4 stabilization technologies at the same time. So you have got sensor shift stabilization within the camera. You've got digital stabilization also applied and also giving a minor crop to this field of view, but the lens is so wide you wouldn't even notice. And of course the optical stabilization in the lens itself. And just for good measure, here's the 10 to 24 again at 10 mil f4 and this is with no stabilization at all so hopefully there shouldn't be any of those juddery artifacts on the trees around me and this is such a wide field of view at 10 millimeter that you could probably get away with it just filming without stabilization for these kind of clips i'll just walk along a little bit at 10 millimeter to see how that looks 
Before now, returning to the rest of this quick review. So that's it for this very brief vlogging test. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think of the X-T4. Is it now one of the most perfect vlogging cameras out there? It does, after all, have sensor shift stabilization, a screen that flips out to face you, pretty good autofocus, decent video as well, 4K at 30p using the full sensor width, or at 50 or 60p with a 1.18 times crop. And again, if you want to find out way more about the X-T4, what it's like in terms of photo quality, speed, handling, controls, and how it compares to the X-T3 and a bunch of other rivals, then do check out my full review, which I'll link to right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.